Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. I am Miri Eisen, sitting in for Jonathan Hessen. Early next week, the Israel's Defense Force will have a significant event, the changing of the guard. Major General Herzi Alevi will be elevated in rank and position to Chief of the General Staff, making him the top military commander in the nation, of course subject to civilian political directives. His investiture was planned months in advance, but in the interim, Jerusalem saw a change of governments. So Halevi will be reporting to a new defense minister, to a new prime minister, and to a new security cabinet. This makes a fresh assessment of Israel's conventional, unconventional, and terror challenges all the more important, so that the new team both in suits and in uniforms, will be up to speed and synchronize its approach to the various threats and opportunities. What are these? How will the Israeli leadership deal with it? Joining us from central Israel are Brigadier General in Reserves Doron Gavish, former Air Defense Chief of the Israel Air Force, Shalom, and Major General in Reserves Gershon HaKohen, IDF Army Corps Commander, Shalom, Hello, me. All the best to everyone. Thank you. And with us, our own Amir Oren. Amir, start us on this journey. New government, new chief of staff. Indeed. Uh, it's uh, quite rare, uh, even though one can uh, at least uh, in 1974 uh, look uh, for a precedent when Rabin took over from Golda Meir and Motagur uh, has just been appointed uh, chief of staff. But usually uh, you don't uh, see such an overlap between uh, military and civilian transitions. And uh, obviously the uh, various uh, planning uh, bodies, not necessarily intelligence, but uh, planning and net assessment bodies, will have to consider how Israel's own actions will be responded to, um, and uh, we will see an interactive game going on, especially since this new government um, is uh, trying to make good on its pledges to be proactive on various fronts and using various methods, especially vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians, perhaps even vis-a-vis Arab citizens of Israel, and this will change the dynamics. And all the while, of course, Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas are still there, and the Israeli military is prepared to respond to these challenges and is waiting to see whether there are new priorities that the new government will try to dictate and that uh, will either enable or force the military to change course. So we're talking about a balance here between the different ones, although at the end, as we said, we're all in the same nation under the civilian authority. Gershon, I'm gonna start first with you. If you had to describe right now that initial meeting when the chief of staff comes in to the meeting of the new security cabinet, the entire new government, how would you present right now the threats that face Israel that the chief of staff needs to come and present to the newly sworn in government of the state of Israel? Actually, uh, beyond all his good plans, and he's really planning in the last two months, he will must face a new challenge, and this challenge coming from the reaction of all Israeli enemies that recognizing uh, that new uh, government giving them new opportunity with new legitimation uh, to a new struggle against Israel due to the uh, stories that they can tell to everybody that look this is a very extreme uh, right-wing government and it is really giving legitimation to a new struggle. Considering that circumstances, the main challenge uh, will be how to deny uh, the main justification uh, that will really give them, uh, give them a, a, a new pressure to find new ideas, to struggle even in the North uh, arena, 
maybe even in the, the Syrian arena. So if I take what you just said right now, Gershon, looking at the northern arena, one that we've lived with for so many years, Don Brigadier General Gavish, do you see in that sense that there is going to be a change because of the changing of the guard, as we said here, the two of them together? Will that make a difference in the threat that we've talked about extensively here in Jerusalem studio of that northern threat? Do you see a change happening there? Uh, well, I, I must say that uh, I don't see a, a great change from their point of view because I think that uh, their interests uh, are leading the, the way of uh, their way of uh, behaving, and I don't think that there is a huge change on their interest. They are looking into their own interest in Lebanon. They are looking on the Iranian interests, and they are trying to compromise between all those interests uh, toward Israel. Uh, so. Um, um, I, I, I don't think that, uh, at least from their point of view, uh, they would do something different from what they would do if there would uh, be a different government here in Israel. Uh, we remember the Hezbollah way of uh, behaving up in the north uh, um, lately with the, with the Lebanon agreement, uh, the, with the agreement that we had with the Lebanon. Uh, threatening uh, uh, to fight against Israel and, and those things. So they are really looking at their own uh, interests. So I don't see a, a big change here. In Syria, I think that uh, all the players once again have their own interests. If it is the Iranians, the, the Russians there, which are there, and, uh, and others. And so I think that uh, at the end of the day, each one of the players is looking on his own uh, interest and they would behave uh, accordingly and and I think uh, but also going um, uh, looking at what you were saying at the beginning it, you're right that those are uh, this is a new establishment but then from the other side we have to remember that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, is uh, he's there for uh, quite a long time leading the Israeli cabinet we, we saw the Israeli strategy national strategy or defense strategy against uh, our enemies. I don't think that um, he would do something different. He would continue probably with his own uh, agenda. Uh, Gallant, uh, our new Minister of uh, Defense, uh, this is uh, someone who is uh, well established in the in the defense uh, issues here in Israel. He himself was a, a general in the Israeli uh, defense forces, and uh, of course Ertzi Alevi, which we devoted a, a full. Uh, program for him, I think, is a, is a very uh, knowledgeable, experienced uh, officer. So some of them are new in their jobs, but uh, I don't think that they are new in, uh, in, the, in the defense arena. Then I'm going to so take what you... Of... Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to take what you took right now. So there's a continuity, perhaps, in the defense arena and those that are directly in that. But Emil, there's no question whatsoever that there's a change in the government and specifically in the security cabinet. So if we talk about the threat assessment, I think about what Gershon brought up before about that change, that the outer side look at us differently. Okay, that's two different things. How the Arab countries and our enemies look at us, um, I'll put that Gershon in its own sense. But this is also about a domestic change. Can we go through a bit? Can there be changes now in the threat assessment of this security cabinet, even with Prime Minister Netanyahu being somebody who's been there for many years? But we have vastly different figures there right now. So the um, operative term here is status quo. As long as Israel wants to maintain the status quo, um, all it has to do is respond to uh, challenges when they come. Of course, it can also preempt if it sees uh, a very imminent uh, danger um, in uh, one of uh, the um, arenas. But um, just to tie it uh, into what uh, Doron just mentioned, the uh, Maritime Lebanon Agreement, during the campaign, the election campaign, Netanyahu, as a candidate, promised to uh, revoke the agreement um, which the uh, former government negotiated once in power. But right now, uh, he is no longer talking uh, in this direction because he knows that if he uh, does that, there will be uh, tension and perhaps conflict with Lebanon, with Hezbollah. So Netanyahu's problem 
is that his main priority is Iran, but his coalition partners' main priority is the Palestinian arena. And if they instigate something which will then escalate, and going back to what Gershon said about um, global legitimacy, if, for instance, the Biden administration does not support Israeli actions to quell violence on the Palestinian front, Biden is not going to support Netanyahu on the Iranian track. As for the security cabinet, yes, there are people with um, little or no experience in these issues, but what matters is the prime minister. The prime minister, if he does not want an issue to come up or does not want to put it to a vote when others present it, he can do it. He, it doesn't mean that he has an automatic majority when he has an initiative. This is what happened 10, 12 years ago on the Iranian issue, when Netanyahu and his defense minister, Barak, were more militant than others, and the cabinet uh, uh, vote uh, was always uh, tied, so there was no uh, decision. But if Netanyahu wants to maintain the, the status quo, it doesn't matter what the makeup of the cabinet is. So here we are right now as we're talking between the four of us, and let's think about it. On the one hand, Lebanon, perhaps continuity, even if the rhetoric before said otherwise. When it comes to the northern arena, Dawn, what I heard from you in its own way was continuity because the figures are the same. But what I'm hearing both from Gershon and from Amir is that the potential for change is in the Palestinian arena. For a moment, Gershon, I'd like your take on the term that Amir brought up before the status quo, okay? Do you think with this changing of the guard, is there a possibility of a change of the status quo that could have real challenges, real differences when it comes both to Jerusalem and to Judea and Samaria? How do you view this right now? Actually, this is the main issue everyone observing what really going to be in Ashark al Ausat was a very, very important report regarding the approach of the Egyptian administration to the new government. They are telling to themselves that they can really uh, find two Israeli governments. One, that of Netanyahu, that he will go to keep the status quo, and with him they are absolutely okay. And the other one is that trend of the extremists and they are trusting Netanyahu that he will overcome the other government. It means that for the Egyptians it is a kind of um, explanation why they are not in anxiety. But actually even for Abu Mazen and for all other uh, forces in the Palestinian arena, they will try uh, to make exploitation of the tension between these two trends of that government. And of course, there is a potential for attention to be exploited. This is a great challenge. And as I take that challenge, Dawn, I'm thinking right now of the challenge again within that room when we talk about the new chief of staff, as you said, somebody who's been there and been built for this position forever. Do you see any kind of change in Israel's preemptive, as Amir mentioned before, the way that we are trying to handle both the Lebanese Hezbollah threat and the Syrian Hezbollah Bashar threat? Do you see any possible change of action or policy? Could there be any kind of tension here? The military wants to do more or less, and the government and the prime minister would want to do more or less. Could you foresee a situation like that now? It's, I think that, um, you know, uh, probably, and, and Gershom, and General Gershom talked about it, that uh, General Erzi Alevi was uh, preparing himself, but uh, he would probably take some time uh, in his own uh, job while he's in the job to do the really to come with the with the new assessment to look around and to see uh, what should be done um, uh, for the the challenges that we have around us, but I think that uh, here too you know in general uh, everyone is aligned that uh, from a strategic point of view Iran is still the major threat 
if we're, and, and I'm not talking about the Palestinian arena, I will, I will say a word about it later, but uh, from, from the countries around us, I think that this is uh, one of the major uh, challenges uh, that uh, should be assessed again and again. Uh, the operational relations uh, from um, the point of view of uh, working together with the United States in this arena, this is also something uh, which is new. We have to remember we are working now with the central uh, command and this is something that uh, I think would bring with it a lot of uh, exercises, a lot of uh, planning and there might be some uh, changes. I'm talking from the operational point of view, which uh, in, in general are playing in favor of Israel and this is something that I'm sure that would be promoted by uh, uh, but General Erzi Alevi. Of course, the general, the, the challenge in the north uh, in Syria is, um, yeah, you know, the Russians are still there, and uh, this is also a strategic issue that uh, uh, he would have to deal with. And uh, and and Lebanon, as was mentioned, uh, of course, uh, before by Amir, and the Hamas is still in the south. So I think that the challenges are still there. There are some things that uh, we'd have to, go, to do maybe differently, uh, but overall, uh, I think that uh, things are uh, probably the same as they were uh, in the last uh, year or two. Uh, but looking forward, there are some, uh, as I said, new uh, things that uh, yeah, you would have to take in consideration. So I'm gonna the, take those. Yes, please. Please. So I'm going to take what you just said in that sense, Doron, and we'll dive more as we go along. But Amir, it's like fascinating, okay? Prime Minister Netanyahu was Prime Minister in the 1990s. Prime Minister Netanyahu was Prime Minister from, remind me if it's 2009 until 2021, and now he's Prime Minister again. He's been Prime Minister for a long time. You and I have been around for a long time. The Iran nuclear issue was discussed in the 1990s. The Iran nuclear issue was discussed throughout all of the last decade. Here we are, 2023. Is there going to be a change now? Does Herzi Alevi bring a new idea? Is he the chief of staff who has to bring to the table something new? How does that bite in with this new cabinet, albeit Prime Minister Netanyahu was the one who's been the consistent element here? So as Gershom Aquino was uh, a member of the general staff uh, can testify, uh, at least uh, over the uh, last uh, several decades, the um, IDF general staff does not propose a new policy. It is waiting for guidance. Uh, the uh, military doesn't always get such guidance because politicians don't want to commit themselves. So the generals must decipher what the politicians want from them but they are trying to tailor their um, military tactical operational um, proposals to what they perceive to be the government policy, which may change with the government. So Halevi is not uh, going to be the driving force um, behind any new uh, proposal, any, any uh, new policy. But earlier you mentioned uh, the term preemptive. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. Now, there are several confusing terms associated with, with that. No one in Israel right now is suggesting preventive war to just because the enemy is building up its force and a couple of years from now is going to be much more powerful, we will now initiate something. The public will not stand for it because the costs will be evident while the profit um, is going uh, to be debated uh, endlessly. As for a preemptive action against a Hezbollah unit uh, trying to sneak into Israel and capture um, a settlement um, or a military outpost, yes. Uh, Halevi, who used to be in charge of the Lebanese border, uh, has expressed his uh, willingness to recommend that. Now, if you do that on the border, what does it mean regarding the missiles and rockets that Hezbollah has and could employ against Israel? Um, should the Israeli defense forces preempt them alongside what it does on the border. So this is a very sensitive issue um, professionally. Um, Halevi will uh, obviously 
he will try to prepare the uh, military for such an eventuality. And as I take that there, Gershon, I'm thinking to myself, so what is Herzi going to be bringing that is new into this world that he's stepping into now? Can you give us an idea of the new things you expect him to bring in with this government? Actually, at least for the first year, he will not really be able to bring an absolute uh, change. In a way, he will be like a conductor of a Beethoven symphony that everyone uh, knows uh, the whole uh, music and the performance is what uh, he can deliver. Uh, the partitura is the same. So, of course, he will make his own performance with new uh, emphasizes, but he will take the first half year in order to really uh, be able to bring a new idea. It's an amazing aspect there because for a moment I'm going to take your Beethoven symphony that's now in my mind, of course, and Doron, I'm looking at you. You were the commander of the air defense. And as a woman sitting here at the table, I'm saying to myself, air defense has managed in the last decade and over that to become an arena where um, it's not the gender is out of the door, but there's enormous equality between men and women. Herzi Alevi is stepping in with, okay, an old new prime minister and a new defense minister, but somebody from the military. But here I am going to put it on the table, the elephant in the room, a security cabinet that has vastly different ideas, certainly when it comes to women within the military. How do you think that the IDF, how Herzi should be handling this very challenging timetable, time period that we're in right now, between on the one hand, wanting to bring into the room more very religious, ultra-Orthodox, that whole aspect of respecting that. And on the other hand, here I am sitting here, 50% of the population and drafted, and I want to have my opportunity, that's not about I'm being the same as a man, but my opportunity to be able to do significant service within the IDF and to bring my capabilities as a woman into the room. How do you see Herzi dealing with no, this? I just said that you have been Gershon the wants to step in. Intelligence <laughs> commander for brigade. Hey, I was. I did my own. That's true in the past. And I think that right now there are challenges that I did not face, Gershon, when I was the first intelligence officer of a brigade 30 years ago, even more. And here we are in 2023. And I think that women within the IDF, but even more so, Herzi as the chief of staff, has to face things that are very, very challenging. Doron, how would you look at this? Yeah, I, I think that this is a, a, a very important point that you are bringing up. And I think it also, uh, uh, we, we should look at it even from a wider point of view. And the, and the big question, if uh, what is the relations between politics and the IDF? And how do we keep the IDF out of, uh, out of the politics, out of the, out of the polity? As much as, uh, as much as it can be done. I think that this is uh, for sure one of uh, the challenges uh, that uh, Herzi Alevi would have to keep the IDF out of uh, politics, uh, out of, of out, out of the polity. It was uh, mentioned uh, a week ago uh, by General Aviv Kochavi, which is still in charge. Uh, he was uh, talking about uh, those things. Um, I, I think that this is uh, something which is very important, uh, and I believe that he would like to keep the IDF out of uh, out of the politics, and uh, he would do everything that he can uh, in order uh, to do it. Um, on on regarding uh, of uh, women serving in the in the IDF, I think that this is uh, an interest first of the IDF because uh, women are bringing a lot of uh, quality into the IDF. Of course, uh, you were mentioning the the Israeli air defense forces. You know. 50% of the recruiters are, are women. I mean, so there is no question there. And this is something that uh, would be continued. And uh, I, I really don't see any any change there. And, um, and you know, uh, I was I was talking about uh, the, the pol keeping the IDF out of the uh, out of the polity. We had uh, a week or two ago, ago some uh, uh, politicians uh, were um, talking about the Israeli uh, spokesman uh, department and and the way that they were behaving and he, he even was uh, threatening. So I think this is uh, really the place to say that uh, first of all we all uh, support 
the Israeli uh, spokesman, and uh, this is intolerable that someone it, it doesn't have to do nothing with politics is uh, threatening him. Uh, and uh, so, so Don, I'm going to take your comments very, on that. Very sense. important Gershon, issue I... that uh, General Herzi Levy would have to uh, to look at, and uh, the IDF must stay out of uh, politics in in all direction. And and you were talking about uh, the issue of women. I I strongly believe that. Uh, the IDF would still uh, be working uh, women and men uh, in order to uh, to do his job. This, this is Gershon. This do you have a, a short issue. response to that one there? Just short for the end. How you see this challenge in the IDF? A brief sentence. The service of women is necessary, and it is going to be much more necessary uh, due to a lot of uh, new jobs. Uh, regarding new technology. So n no doubt that we are far beyond be uh, just thinking whether at all uh, it will go ahead. It is going ahead. Gershad, I'm going to cut you off for a second in that sense. Ger Amir, I want to just hear in that sense your final take on the challenges facing these two new guards. In the security cabinet, there will be only one woman. Uh, a retired Brigadier General, Miri Regev. The problem is unity of command with an additional minister in the Ministry of Defense and the uh, border guard, the border police, under directly under Minister Bengvir. We are in for a very challenging period. Absolutely. I want to thank my panelists. I'm sorry this is all the time that we have. I want to thank you. Thank you for joining us and Shalom from Jerusalem.